the Kiwi Ears and Critical Singolo. Oh boy, this has been quite a ride. Hey everyone, it's Jamie here from Side Sound Audio, and we're taking a look at the latest collab from Critical and Kiwi Ears. Now, I'm aware that there's been some discussion regarding this IEM, so first I'll just review this IEM as it is, and then after that I'll have some more comments to discuss about it. For full disclosure, I was not sent this IEM to review. I bought this myself since I wanted to have a completely honest take on it. Also, I, mean, I was never, you know, offered one and, well, I need to stay relevant with the flavor of the month IEM. The Singolo is a single dynamic driver IEM that makes use of a Helmholtz resonator to tune the response. A Helmholtz resonance is when air is pushed in and out of a cavity, causing the volume of air inside to resonate at a specific frequency. It's the same as blowing air across the top of a bottle. This method of tuning isn't very common in IEMs, although some have attempted to use it in the past. The Singolo is supposedly the first IEM that uses this method of tuning in a single dynamic driver configuration that also makes a meaningful and measurable difference. The reason for using it in this case is to achieve a bass tuck at around 300Hz, similar to what you'd find in a tuned dynamic driver setup, but achieved with just one driver. So considering all that, how does it sound? Well, this is actually another area that had some controversy as, on paper, it's tuned relatively well. But people seem to experience more than the typical variance in how it sounds from person to person. This seems to be due to how it sits in your ear as it's quite a shallow fit, and the transition from the nozzle to the rest of the shell tapers wider than most other IEMs, which in some people ends up preventing a proper seal, which in then ends up causing it to sound quite bright and lacking in bass. I am happy to say though that in my case, the Singolo actually fits me perfectly. In fact, it's one of the most comfortable IEMs that I've worn, whereas most other IEMs for me tend to fit a little awkward, so maybe I'm just the outlier here. With me being able to achieve a full seal, they sound like how you'd expect a Critical's tuning to sound with a decent sub bass emphasis, but mids that are still forward enough that it doesn't come across too V-shaped or too scooped out. They aren't really anything special when it comes to hearing small details in music, and even though I might be the ideal customer for this IM since it fits me quite well, there still is a problem area in the upper mids for me. It comes across a bit shouty and harsh when it comes to vocals. It's not all the time, but if I'm listening to music or spoken word content, and someone is talking, it sometimes feels too emphasized or fatiguing if someone starts talking louder. On my 7-Eleven ear simulator, it doesn't look like it has too much of a problem in that region, but from others' measurements on 5128a, it does seem to have a bit extra energy up at around 4 kHz, which may be part of what I'm hearing. While I do like the build and comfort of the IM itself, it is lacking in accessories for the price, especially when compared to other options that are in the same price range. The IEMs come with a cable and a set of ear tips, and that's it. No case, not even a pouch. As well, the cable itself is a bit springy and stiff. And while a specific issue regarding the sound could be EQ'd out, I still don't feel comfortable to recommend this IM due to how much variation there is between people regarding the seal. As well, at $80, if I were to buy an IM for myself at that price, I would rather choose the Truthier Hexa, Simgot EM6L, or even the Simgot EA500LM which all sound a little better to my ear. As well, they include accessories that far surpass what the Singolo comes with for the price. Even the Truth Ear Zero Red is a much better option in my opinion if you want that same tuning, but without the problem area in the upper mids and just a little bit better sense of clarity in the upper treble. With all that said, do I think this IM was a wasted effort? Honestly, no. I think that this IM had a lot of potential that could be ironed out in a second revision, and I think that this needed to happen, as the method of using a resonator to tune a single dynamic driver is actually a good one. And sometimes the market just needs a push for others to take notice and start implementing similar designs in their products. That's why I think that this needed to be a collab, from Critical specifically. I believe that in the future, we may start to see more budget IMs implementing similar technologies. This IM is more of a proof of concept, and we can see that the resonator does work in its implementation. If we cover the port for the resonator with a piece of tape, we do see a drop in the bass SPL, which is to be expected when you cover up a bass port. But as well, the 300Hz notch fills in, which to me indicates that the resonator is doing its job to attenuate that specific frequency range. There were some misunderstandings from the marketing that made some assume the IM was using electrical filters rather than, than acoustic tuning, that the resonator didn't work, or claims that while it was attenuating 300Hz, it was adding more energy to 500Hz as a trade-off. But from looking at this, we can see that it's more apparent that this is just the natural tuning of the IEM, and the resonator just didn't affect those frequencies in that range very much. So when the resonator is working, it gives that sort of appearance. From this, I think it's safe to say that the resonator does work as, as advertised, and this opens up a lot of possibilities for IEMs in the future. I just don't think that this specific IEM is the best recommendation at this price point, and you're probably better off spending your money somewhere else. 